Hi everyone, I'm here at Heritage Retrofit Carpentry at Holland College and I'm going to meet Josh Silver and Cardell Roll and they're going to teach me what it takes to be a carpenter. My name is Josh Silver, I'm the learning manager here at Heritage Retrofit Carpentry at Holland College. Welcome, we have an exciting day for you, I hope you're ready. I am. But first, I'd like to just tour you the shop and show you kind of what we're up to. One thing we have here, Caitlin, is a nine foot high arch window. This came out of a heritage building uh, in Charlottetown mm -hmm. and our students rebuilt them. What kind of education would you need to become a carpenter? For this program, we have to have a, a high school diploma or the equivalent. Good with math, there's a lot of fractions, but we take you right from zero and, and teach you as much as we can. You must get a nice sense of accomplishment out of this. I do, you're, you're right. Every day at the end of the day, I've accomplished something and I can physically see it. <laughs> we know that's true with our students too. So about 30% of our uh, classroom time is actually lectures and math. But as soon as we can get that into their mind, we come into the shop and use that. The first step that we'd ask our students to do is just make a portion of a window. So if you want to have a look at it, you can see that there's holes, those are the mortises, and the pegs are the tenons and the mortise and tenons snap together. Do you guys do the grooves where the glass is supposed to go? Absolutely. We square it up, we mill it all, we, we do everything you see here just from rough lumber. So how much would like raw talent or natural ability in building things apply to carpentry? I think that people come to us that are naturally inclined to using their hands and, and carpentry and therefore they probably have a little bit of raw talent. At least half of our uh, graduates come to us with zero experience. My name is Carl Roll. I'm a graduate of Heritage Retrofit Carpentry at Harlem College. How do you get it to be so strong? Well, it's called a dado joint. Mm -hmm. These are the cuts for it. And it forms like that. That's sweet. So how do you get these grooves in the wood? I will show you. You want to help me make one? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> how do you incorporate the latest technology into such a traditional field of work? Our finished products have to look as if they were built 100 or 200 years ago but we still have to be economically viable. We still want uh, clients to hire us, and if we're doing everything by hand that we would traditionally 100 years ago, we just would we'd have way too much labor and be way too expensive. So we are constantly incorporating the latest, greatest technology. What type of person would like this field of work? I would say a person that is passionate about carpentry and who is a hard worker and who's willing to put in the time and who's patient. My main advice is I always tell my students their most important tool in your toolbox is your brain and you're coming to us to develop and sharpen that tool. Anybody can go to a supply store and buy a hammer and a piece of wood, but it really takes a craftsperson to turn that into something beautiful and that someone's willing to pay you for. So by sharpening that most important tool, you become that master that you're going towards. Thanks so much Cardell for showing me all this. No for more information about this episode or any other, just visit nextnetwork.ca. See you next time.